Today we got the mysteries. Today we got the mysterious final hours of Damien Nettles. Let's check this out. It looks like a video game. Oh. The Isle of Wight, a small picturesque island about two miles off the south coast of England, an area famous for its rich culture and natural beauty. It's a traditional and friendly place where many Brits choose to retire. Home to 140,000 people, in the summer months it's a hotbed for tourists. People flock to the so-called Dinosaur Island, where so many fossils and prehistoric bones have been found, the remnants of the rock's Jurassic past. That is a big red flag already. A place like that, clearly where you can drop the bodies and stuff like that. Nowadays, the landmass is much less ferocious, the only real danger being a feisty red squirrel or a rogue seagull pinching your fish and chips as you walk along the seaside. Or so you'd hope. This was Damien Nettles. Born in Singapore on June 21st, 1980, he and his three siblings spent much of their early life bouncing between countries with their English mother, Valerie, and their American father, Ed, before finally settling down on the Isle of Wight in 1990. In many ways, Damien was your typical mid-90s teen, one who loved Doc Martens and rocking out to Nirvana. Wait, so this happened years ago. I thought it was a recent missing, missing case. Okay. Blur and the Beatles. One who enjoyed staying up late and socialising. One who hoped to study marine biology in the future. And one who, in all likelihood, fell victim to a small island's shady underworld. This is the unsolved mystery of Damien Nettles. Well, this is going to be... Are you sick of feeling like your personal information is being bought and sold like a commodity? I sure am. A quick Google search of my name came up with loads of my personal data. My full name, email, home address. Turns out data brokers were selling my information to scammers, spammers, and anyone who wanted it. Well, that, that is the crazy thing about if you put yourself, if you expose yourself to the internet, bruh. They can literally use your information to scam other people. And people will think it's you, bruh. So you must be very, very careful of what you put out there. It was the 2nd of November. 1996, a cold and dreary day on the Isle of Wight. That evening, a then 16-year-old Damien Nettles slipped on his favourite outfit, a pair of blue jeans, a black sweater, and his signature Doc Martens, and caught a ride with his father Ed to East Cows, eager to meet up with his best friend, Chris Boone. As he stepped out the vehicle, Ed told his son to be home no later than midnight. He looks like one of those kids, a typical American type of kids in the movies back then. Always polite, Damien thanked his dad for the lift, agreed to the curfew with his trademark grin, and set off towards Chris's house. That was the last time Ed ever saw his son. Yeah. Unbeknownst to either of their parents, Damien and Chris were secretly planning to get drunk together. Now I don't know about other parts of the world, but in the UK, and most of Europe, that's pretty typical for people their age. Damien and Chris's night began at 7.30pm when they attended a house party hosted by a mutual friend. Well, this party turned out to be more of a gathering, and so, preferring to spend their night elsewhere, Damien and Chris left at 9.30 and went to a local off-license to buy some booze. The legal drinking age in the UK is 18, but Damien was tall, 6 foot 4 to be exact, and could definitely pass for older than his years, and as such, the pair fancied their chances of not being ID'd. Luck smiled upon them, and they left the store with two bottles of special red, a strong and cheap cider. From there, the two caught the ferry from east to west cows, and witnesses aboard described the two youngsters as chatty but not drunk. After arriving on Cows High Street, the two young men hopped from pub to pub, hoping Damien's height would work in their favour once again. Yet, despite their best efforts, they were refused entry to all of them. Though they couldn't rely on Damien's height to get them into any venues, the one thing you can always rely on is the British weather going from bad to worse. Without warning, it began hammering it down with rain, 
and rather than lurk around outside bars like a pair of drowned rats, Damien and Chris mutually decided to call it a night. They walked together towards Northwood Park, and when they reached the steps, the boys parted ways. That was it. That is where everything could have gone south. That is where Damien probably got lost, bro. Not lost, but there is where something really bad happened. Late at night, yo, they used to allow... They used to allow the people to go out at night that late. I know my crime might have been maybe not that bad as it is now, but still, wow. There has to be, there had to be a curfew. Yeah, there was a curfew. Obviously, they break the rules. They are teenagers, so it's bound to happen. At 10.30pm. But though Chris's night was over, Damien's wasn't. Oh. He initially set off in the direction of his house, but at some point, he turned around and returned to the high street, bouncing from pub to pub once again. Without the much younger looking Chris by his side, Damien found it far easier to get inside without being ID'd. Several locals who knew Damien confirmed seeing him inside various pubs during that next hour. One witness even recalled seeing a confused young man matching Damien's description in the Harbour Lights pub car park, attempting to open the door of a blue Ford Fiesta at around 11.15. Damien's hunger eventually got the better of him, and like many young Brits after a night out, he went to fill up on some greasy food. Meant when in counts, where better than Yorkie's fish and chip shop. So there's footage of him arriving at that time. Yeah, there's some footage of him. The CCTV footage, captured from inside Yorkie's, okay. shows Damien entering the busy high street eatery at 11.34pm. It's really the gentle late. giant can be seen chatting with other patrons before placing his order. <laughs> Damien was known for being social, larger than life, and for chatting with strangers. But judging from the footage, it looks to me as if his chattiness might have stemmed from the cider he'd been drinking, or perhaps even from a stronger substance. He's out of it. You can see he's, he's not himself, but That's a lot of salt. There's no how I prefer my fish and chips. There's just chips. In the mind of the man who served Damien that fateful night, alcohol alone doesn't make you act like that. Damien left the shop at 11.39pm. Shortly thereafter, he tried to board a bus and asked the driver to take him to Cows. The driver told him that he was already in Cows. In response, Damien tried to take the driver's picture with the camera he was carrying, politely thanked the driver for the ride, and then stumbled back off the vehicle. A witness in a stationary car later noticed a young man at the same bus stop, one who matched Damien's description. This young man approached the witness's car, got them to roll down the window, and then nervously whispered, They're watching us. Whoa. He repeated this phrase before disappearing down the high street. The last reported sighting of Damien was at 12.06am as he made his way along Sun Hill in the direction of his home. The streets. Reacting to videos like this late at night and hearing comments like that, it really gives me the chills, it really creeps me up. 
creep. It's just creep. It's just. It, it just doesn't sit right with me now, bruh. At that point, we're empty. When the rest of the Nettles family awoke later that morning, they quickly realized that Damien hadn't returned home. That was completely How out of character. That Valerie and Ed tried their best to contact him, but were unable to do so, and as such, went to the local authorities and reported their son missing. Today, 27 and a half years later, Damien's whereabouts and well-being remain a mystery, with wow. this surveillance footage being the last to show him alive. So, what happened to Damien Nettles that dreary night in November 1996? Well, like any missing wow. person case, there are five main explanations we can examine. He ran away. He ended his own existence. He had an accident. He was taken. Maybe. Or he was killed. Maybe. Thank you for that smile. To begin with, the police didn't suspect foul play. When Ed and Valerie told them that Damien hadn't returned home that night, they ignored their urgent pleas for land and air searches stating that their son had probably just run off for the weekend. Their attitude was so apathetic that they mistakenly recorded Damien's age as 19 rather than 16, making him a missing adult instead of a missing child. Whoa. When Mrs. Nettles called the station a few days later for an update, she was unbelievably dismissed by officers as a hysterical mother and was told that her frequent calls were obstructing their investigation. When it was clear to Valerie and the rest of the Nettles family that Damien wasn't ignoring them on purpose, and besides, on such a small island, where was he meant to have run off to? Word travels fast on the Isle of Wight. Everyone was aware of Damien's name and face by that point, and nobody had reported seeing a distinctive six foot four boy anywhere. So people will just give any description like they as they want to. They just want to be involved in the story by just commenting or just giving their part of what they saw that night. Which brings us to Damien's mental well-being. Those who knew Damien described him as having a zest for life, and no one suspected he was planning to end things. Shortly before his disappearance, Damien had broken up with his girlfriend, Abby Scott, and some believe that he took the breakup harder than he let on. They say that after eating his final meal from the chippy, Damien walked out into the sea, never to return. Wow. But Abby herself you see, thinks there's a more sinister reason behind Damien's People disappearance. Just saying anything. Near the end of their relationship, Damien befriended some unsavory older men, once known to be involved in the drugs trade. Ooh. Despite its idyllic setting, in the 90s, the Isle of Wight was home to a criminal underworld. One sect was a group of a dozen or so dealers who operated in and around East and West Gauss, the area where Damien was last seen. Many were well-known figures on the island who dealt in every kind of substance imaginable, among them Bunny Isles the island's most notorious dealer, with over 30 criminal convictions to his ridiculous name. So then there was Bunny's housemate and best friend, Nicky McNamara, a violent and unstable man who often got high on his own supply. There was Nicky's girlfriend, Shirley Barrett, a woman with 52 unspent convictions and who was known to throw used needles at children. What? And last but not least, known Spencer, but she's not in prison. a friend of the trio who did little for the reputation of British teeth. Damien and Chris did secretly smoke together regularly, that much we know. According to Chris, they often made those purchases from the Dirty Dozen, who typically operated out of Bunny's home. Though Chris hasn't confirmed this, it's suspected that he and Damien were going from pub to pub that evening, looking for a dealer they recognised. Given the reputation of the Dirty Dozen, it wasn't long before word began spreading across the island that dealers were behind Damien's vanishing, though the who, how, where and why changed depending on who you asked. For many years, it's those crazy. rumours remained just that. Rumours. Of course such unsavoury types were going to be magnets for such suspicion. But in 2002, six years after Damien's last confirmed sighting, someone came forward, not as a speculator, but as a witness. Why not? The source, who has opted to remain anonymous, confessed to a team of BBC journalists that he used to deal alongside Nicky McNamara. This source alleged that Damien owed Nicky money for an eighth of pot, Angry about the unpaid debt, Nicky supposedly punched Damien with so much force that he died instantly. The source claims that Nicky then hid Damien's body inside his house for three weeks before burying him in Parkhurst Forest. 
Oh. Despite the Nettle family's best efforts, the authorities refused to take cadaver dogs out to that location, citing that the source wasn't trustworthy. A group of local residents came together to try and excavate the huge site. But that is the only source that you've got. That's the only source that came forward or the only person that came forward with some information. You have to follow on that. You don't can't say that not trustworthy. At that point, that's your only hope. The police denied them permission to do so, but the group went ahead with the dig regardless. Unfortunately, that search turned up no sign of Damien. Which begs the question, was there any truth in that source's confession? Well, perhaps. You see, day. years later, a separate source claimed to have seen Nikki walking down West Coast High Street at 11.30pm the night Damien went missing, right around the same time that he would have entered Yorkies. Supposedly with Nikki were his infamous posse, Bunny, Shirley, and Danny. That timing could, of course, be coincidental. November 2nd was a Saturday night, so Nikki and Damien being in town at the same time doesn't prove that he took the boy's life. The next day, however, the source claims to have seen Nikki burning what appeared to be a black sweater in an oil drum, apparently muttering to himself, I'm a damned man. I'm a damned man. According to this witness, the smell coming from the drum was like that of burning flesh. Neither oh. of the source's confessions have ever been substantiated, so and though they shouldn't be ignored, they should be treated with a healthy dose of skepticism. One thing that could help clear up any doubts would be if Nicky and his cohort were caught on video alongside Damien that night. Luckily, seven security cameras covered the area along Cow's High Street at the time, and should have captured images of Damien leaving Yorkies. That same footage may well hold the key to uncovering who exactly he encountered. All of it was collected and handed over to the police to be enhanced. No one Yet, could see. strangely, the officers working the case accidentally taped over all of it before it could be analysed. Wow. Because of one foolish officer's actions, that vital footage has been lost forever. Wow. Frustrated with the police's repeated failures and lack of progress, the Nettles Inside. family hired a private investigator to look into Damien's disappearance and see whether there truly was a link between him and Nikki McNamara. Soon after taking on the case, however, that same PI received a visit from the police himself. They warned him not to investigate the matter. Damien, they suspected, had drunkenly tried to swim the Solent that night, the stretch of water that separates the Isle of Wight from the British mainland. He had likely drowned or froze on his way to Portsmouth, they said, and would probably never be found. Where they got that theory from remains unclear. But as the local fisherman understood all too well, the Solent gives back what it takes away. That is, everything that falls in gets it's washed so up eventually. Damien's father, Ed, even spoke with the harbour master in Kaos, Captain Henry Wrigley. We got the charts out, and I calculated for them the tidal movements, tidal sets, and rate, as well as all of the possibilities in case he had slipped into the water. The Solent is complicated, but it's well charted. I'm certain that had he gone into the water that night, he would have been returned to the land. The harbour master knew that the police's theory was nonsensical. So did the PI. Ignoring Maybe the officer's warning, he conducted police. his own investigation and began by speaking with Shirley Barrett, the girlfriend of Nikki McNamara. Off the record, Shirley told the private eye that Nikki Good and one other man had picked Damien up that night on Bering Road, drove him to who knows where, and did God knows what to him. But Shirley also told the PI that if he spoke a word of her confession to anyone, she'd have him murdered. Oh. That confession actually held some water. In 2005, ten years after Damien went missing, an acquaintance of Nicky's came forward and said that on that fateful night, he had seen Nicky holding Damien up against a wall in West Cowes. Why Standing by and watching was Nicky's up? sidekick, Danny Never Spencer. Enough. Could Danny have been the other man that Shirley had alluded to? Many tall tales of what happened to Damien have been passed around over the years, that he was killed while trying to protect a friend, that he was trafficked off the island in a boat, that he was chopped up and turned into fish bait. Guess you but the only one know. that stood the test of time is that Nicky McNamara was in some way responsible. Nicky himself would never escape that suspicion for the rest of his life, not that he had to live with it for long. He died in 2002 from an accidental overdose, well, one that was a ruled accidental. Heroin had been injected into his back and he was found in his girlfriend Shirley's bath. Wow. 
Her place was known locally as the House of Death due to the number of people who had OD'd there. By the time Shirley found Nikki, he had been dead in the bath for several days. She had been in the house the entire time, but was apparently so out of her mind that she hadn't noticed him. Despite That's Nikki's crazy. demise, to this day, nobody has mustered up the courage to come forward with credible information about Damien's disappearance, and those who have spoken up have done so unofficially and anonymously. As far as I can tell, Nikki's friend, Danny Spencer, still lives on the island. According to those who know him, when he's he drunk, moved, Danny, as I said in the corner, he moved the bricks. He often talks about Damien Nettles, the boy who went missing all those years ago, and allegedly the repeats the mystery. phrase, if there's no body, there's no crime. No body, no crime. Somehow, and the mind boggles at this, Danny's been able to get his hands on the confidential witness statements which threw suspicion on both him and Nikki. Whether he's used that information to intimidate those who tried to speak out against him remains unclear, though it's worth noting that at least one witness has since retracted their statement. The authorities did question Danny, but released him without charge due to a lack of evidence. Seven other arrests yeah, have been made since then too, but nobody has ever been charged in connection with Damien's case. The police kept no logs or recordings of any of their interviews with the suspects. Given that he was with Nikki on the night of November 2nd, 1996, journalists have since spoken with his former housemate, Bunny Arts, a man rumoured to know what happened to Damien. Bunny denies having ever met the boy. And that's despite Damien's best friend, Chris Boone, admitting that they used to score from him. Safe to say, Bunny likely knows more than he's letting on. Could be. As for the police, Valerie Nettles has described their management of the case as lacklustre, shoddy, and pitiful. From the force's viewpoint, they've invested 20 years into the investigation, have taken 357 witness statements, and reviewed over 2,500 documents. But given how ineffective their investigation has been thus far, there are many who suspect that there's something larger at play here, and that everything is not quite right on the Isle of Wight. It would later come to light that the police edited this video from inside Yorkies, removing a portion which showed a police car passing by the window. Question that is, really could be the case, bro. Though their complete mishandling of Damien's case could be chalked up to incompetence or inexperience, it's hard not to contemplate an altogether more sinister explanation could be with that they fumbled the case intentionally to protect either Damien's killer or themselves. But to protect myself, I have to say, that's all speculation. Damien's family would later leave the Isle of Wight and move to Dallas, Texas, citing that the island now held too many painful memories. On the 27th anniversary of her son's disappearance, Damien's mother Valerie spoke with news on the Wight. We're still hopeful that one day we'll have some finality to this case. In the meantime, that's a dream. The reality is we live in this that's world crazy. of missing persons, surrounded by families like ours, waiting for answers, suffering ambiguous loss as they live a life not fully engaged in the present, but lost in the past. A staggering 6,000 people are reported missing every week in the UK. 6,000? The vast majority are found within 48 wow. hours. Some, like Damien, remain lost for decades. Wow, over Some 20 years. Some are never found. Subscribe to the Lazy ma Masquerade, bro. Wow, wow, wow. What do you guys think of this whole story? This is the first time I've come across this story. Of Damien Nittles. Still have been been found. All that accusations that have made, the people have made that they, but nobody can come with come forward with concrete evidence bro they are all just speaking yeah they're all just speaking anything just to get involved it must be tough with the family over 20 years you haven't found your child that is crazy bro it's, 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 it's very big that the child is no more there he doesn't exist anymore could be the police because of 
all the setbacks they the police had it's it's weird. it's a coincidence that all that type of stuff just happened like it happened so the police can be easily involved in this whole thing right here why like the the footage is gone them saying it that the, the child he might be in the water but the, oh but the person that's there by the water side knows that if something goes in there it always spits it out but it hasn't done that because he isn't in the water so the police are telling you it might be but let, let me not say anything it's all just accusations or all just opinions but yeah guys i will see you on the next video stay tuned